Hello guys. So today we are going to look at the extremely cool feature that is coming soon in React 19. And that is the React Compiler. So the React Compiler will automatically optimize your code without you changing it. So things like your component re-rendering multiple times will be automatically fixed by the compiler. So right now we have access to the compiler in beta for testing. So we are going to do a simple test on how much it can improve our code and our rendering times. So as a start, we can try to optimize our code and then see what React can do without us optimizing the code. So look at our component here. So this app component here has a counter which has its own state in the root component and then clicking on the button increases that counter and then it has child components here, another counter component which also has its own count state and then also a fruits component here which receives a function here that does some calculation and then in the fruit component we call that function and then we render the data. So it's just converting uh, strings to emojis like that. So inside each component, I have added a console.log statement here showing that the component is rendering. So we have the rendering fruits component, uh, rendering the counter component, we have rendering the app component, and also inside the fruits to emojis function here, we have a log on when the function is being called. So I want you to notice something in this console here. So let's refresh the app and uh, take a look at the console. So on first render, we are rendering the app component, we are rendering uh, the counter component, we are rendering the fruits component, and also calling the calculates emojis function. So you're seeing two renders here because in development, React renders twice. So you're not going to pay attention to the duplicate logs here. So I want you to notice something. So let's clear the console here. So if we click the count button here, so this is the button that is in the parent component. So if we click it, you can see that we have rendered the app component because uh, the count state here has changed. You can also see that we are rendering the counter component because the parent component has rendered. We are rendering the fruits component and we are also calling the calculate emojis function. So if we click it again, the same thing happens again. So every time the count variables change, we have to re-render the parent component and all the child components. Although the child components don't depend on any props supplied by the parent component. So something like uh, this counter component here accepts no props, so it should not re-render. Also the fruits component here, it accepts this uh, function as a prop, but this function doesn't depend on the app state. So fruits should not re-render. So how can we fix this? So let's start with the counter component. So if you go to the counter component, what we can do is wrap this component inside a memo. So we use the memo util from React like that, and then we wrap the component inside that function. So this way, this component won't render at all when the parent components change. So because it doesn't depend on any state, only one value is returned by this component. So let's save this and then uh, try to check how this works. So we can clear the logs. So if we click the count, button here and you look at the console so we have re-rendered the app component we have re-rendered the fruits component and also the calculator emojis function has been called notice that you are not rendering the counter component anymore so this is good so we have fixed render of this component so let's go to the fruits component here so first we can start with the fruits to emojis prop that is passed to this component so if we go to the app here so to make sure that our fruits to emojis function here doesn't get called every time the parent or the child renders we can also wrap it in a use callback so use callback we wrap it in the function like that and uh, because this function does not depend on any props we just give it an empty dependency array like that so this should render only once so let's go back to the fruits component here so we are calling the fruits to emojis function every time this component re renders but we should only call this function only if it uh, changes right so we should only do this calculation only if the fruits to emojis function changes because that is the prop you're depending on here. So again, we can wrap this into a use memo hook like that. So use memo accepts a function that returns a value like that. And uh, this function has one dependency that is the fruits to emojis function. So we'll only recalculate this function if the fruits to emojis function changes. So let's try and test our optimizations. So on first load, we're rendering the app component, the 
counter component and the fruits component and also calculating the emojis so let me just clear the logs so that we can see this clearly so let's try clicking the count button so now the logs are continuing to reduce we are rendering only the app component and the fruits component so we have successfully reduced calculation of the fruits to emojis prop here but also we need to avoid rendering the fruits component here so to prevent the rendering of our fruits component here we can do the same thing we did to the counter component by wrapping it also in a memo so we wrap it in react memo like that and then close it like that so let's save this and then uh, refresh the page and uh, retry this so on first load we are rendering the app the counter and the fruits component and calculating the emojis so let's clear and then try to render so when you click count now we are not rendering the fruits and the counter emoji so this is behaving properly the way it's supposed to behave so because we're only changing the state variable for the app component we shouldn't be re-rendering the child components so only the app component is rendered so for the counter child component when we click it only the child will render and not the parents which is expected so our little app here is now optimized to run properly and not to do too many renders so what you're going to do is reset this app into its initial state and try to use the react compiler to do all these small optimizations that we've been making without us changing anything so what we can do because you're using uh, jit we can just uh, stash all our changes so our app should go back to re-rendering everything on uh, clicking the count variable. So to upgrade to the new React compiler, we need to update uh, the React dependencies to the latest beta version because it's still not in production yet. So we need uh, to install React at a beta, a React DOM at beta, and also the Babel uh, plugin React compiler, which is uh, the dependency that will do most of the magic for us. So with that installed, we also need to configure our Vit config because I'm using Vit to host the React app to be able to use our Bubble plugin. So the config is under Bubble uh, plugins. So the plugin we are using is the Bubble plugin React compiler and then the arguments the plugin accepts. So like that and then we can try to test it. So on initial load we are rendering the app component, the counter, the fruits component and also recalculating emojis. So let's see if the React compiler has optimized our code here so if we click count notice that immediately everything is optimized for us so only the parent app component is rendering and not the the fruits component and the counter component and also the fruits uh, to emojis function here is not called so what we had to optimize with our code is now available without us having to change anything so that's how good the new react compiler is so if you have a currently running react code base you can try out the react compiler to see how it will improve your code base so it's still in testing phase but it's good to prepare early so that when it finally drops you know what you need to do to be able to move to react 19 so there's a script here you can use to check uh, for compatibility uh, within your code base to see how many components will be affected by the new react compiler so that is all thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video